Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. I'm back with the second video in our project in which I show you how I install my home network in this new house. So today it's the second part. I know it's been a while since I published the first video. So I've been all over the place these days, but I found some time now to give you the details on this second step in this project. So this is where I'm going to change this bunch of cables into this looking very professional, very good, very clean. And all I did is install this um, nine new rack and also the patch panel. So I'm sharing this because some of you are trying to be network professionals or some of you are just curious about what's happening out there. But me as a professional, I stand here and I share with you these small things that you can learn and hopefully make money out of it. Or just, you know, some people can build a business out of these things. And it's to me a pleasure to share these kind of things. And if you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to like this video so it's going to be shared with many people. And also don't forget to subscribe if you are a tech guy, if you like what I do, if you wanna be an engineer, if you are an engineer. On this channel, KB Trainings, I bring you in my world and I show you most of my projects. If you're studying for the CCNA right now, I have my course on the CCNA on kbtrainings.com forward slash CCNA. If you are interested, go there and we're going to study a lot of things. So this is the second part. As I said, I've already finished that second step and I'm going to talk about what I did, what I needed, and what I used. Before starting everything, I had to move my current equipment. So I connected the quasher cable to the quasher cable that's attached to my office. And that's where I put my equipment. That's where they are right now. The, the signal is good because it's uh, you know on the, on the main floor. And that's what I'm going to use until I have this project completely done and I can move things back to the way it should be normally. The first equipment here is the rack. So right now I'm using the NEF point 9U rack. Shout out to DevPoint, by the way. I tagged them on Instagram and they also tagged me back. It's a good product. It's very strong, very steady. And because some of the equipments I'm going to be using are very heavy and some of them are really not. But with this 9U rack, I'm really confident that it's going to do the job really well. It's also on the wall looking good. And um, I just had time to put it together and also put it on the wall. So depending on the environment that you are in, you may need to get another type of rack that is covered if you have a lot of dust or anything like that. But me, I'm inside and it's also really ventilated. You know, the U is the length that you use to measure the, the height of the rack itself. So one U is the, the, the height of this switch here. But if I have nine U, so I can have nine of these, which is more than enough. For example, the rack that I'm using in my data center, the one that I showed you in one of my last videos, that one is a 12 U rack and it does also a good job with all my servers and everything. Mostly in the data center, you find bigger racks like 42 U racks and those are very tall. I had one of those before, but it was just too much for for a home network. The second thing that we needed was a patch panel. I bought this patch panel from Amazon, of course, from Cable Matters, and it does the job. It looks good. The patch panel will make your network look very professional and very good. Some people will be asking if I really need a patch panel here, but the answer is yes, because even though I have the option to connect all this cable directly into the switch, but it's not very flexible or scalable. If you want to have that flexibility, you need to have a patch panel so that all your cables will connect directly to the patch panel and you can move the front of the patch panel as you want. Like you can connect the front to the switch as needed. Like right now on this patch panel, I allocated like the first 10 port to the cameras and the next four port to the APs and so on. So this is just a way for me to manage this very easily. And for the ethernet wiring, I use the T568B. That one is very common um, on regular networks. The A is mostly for, for the government or federal contract or anything like that. But for houses, for regular networks, for businesses, you can go with the T568B. I also needed a wire punch down impact tool. That's what I used to connect all these cables to the patch panel. It was very easy to use and uh, all the connections were great. I was able to test this with another equipment, which is the cable tester. So after installing everything, I was able to test, or even I used the cable tester actually to find out what some other cables were because even though after the installation, they put some labels on those, um, on those cables, I was still not able to find some of them. So I had to go around and connect my cable tester 
and also come back to the come back to the basement and connect the, at the other end of the cable tester to test continuity and see what cable I was dealing with. So that's something that you definitely need if you want to do this job. And of course, you need a cable stripper to remove the the protection on the cables and have all of the wires so you can work on them. And the other tool that you need is the crimp tool. This one will help crimp all those uh, RJ45 connectors and attach them to your Ethernet cables. You can also cut your cables and do some great stuff with it. Another thing that I used is the label maker. The label maker will help you uh, make labels for your wires. And it's really important because when you deal with this many wires, you need to make sure which one is which. So you need to put labels on them. So I wanted to make some good labels, very professional. And I use it for, you know, for anything in my office or anywhere, even in the kitchen. When I want to label something, I just go and print it and it looks pretty good. So this is definitely something that you should buy if you are doing this kind of work or if you just want to be organized and it will make you look like a grown up. So when I was trying to install the, the rack on the wall, I noticed that the two studs that I have on the wall didn't really fit the width of the patch panel. So I had to cut some other lateral uh, stud so I can attach the patch panel to it. As you can see right now, it looks pretty good and it's very steady. I can even clamp on it, but I didn't want to do it because I don't want to do it in front of the camera. All the 24 ports on this patch panel were great and well connected. So it's now just waiting for the next step or the next equipment. You also need to make sure that all the cables behind the patch panel are organized and tied together so that you won't have any issue. And something is that I had also to move all the TV cables and telephone to this different panel here in which I'm going to have uh, those connections done. So if you want anything else, let me know. I'll be glad to go in detail in some of these steps here, but I think this is pretty much very easy and you're going to find way more videos talking about this. Hey, this is Guy here. I'm in the process of editing this video and I just realized that I shouldn't send you to another YouTube channel or another video to see how to do the, the cabling or how to connect your RG45 connector to the ethernet cable. So I'm going to release um, some videos in the next couple of days in which I'll show you how to connect your RJ45 connectors to your ethernet cable. And I'll also show you what connectors we use to bring those cables out of the wall. So the next step will be to install another device, maybe the switch, I'm not sure, but I definitely need to do it very quickly because I need to bring my servers up and running. So you're going to see another video in the next couple of days and I'll try to make it as quick as possible so that I can you know, finally finish with this and go to something else. So thank you guys for watching. And if you like what I do, if you wanna support me, don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to this channel for more information like this, for more projects like this. And um, if you want to learn the CCNA, go on my CCNA course on, uh, on kbtrainings.com forward slash CCNA. That's where I go from zero to engineer. I teach you the CCNA and all the notions that are required for you to be successful in this field. Thank you guys for watching this and I'll see you in the next video here on KB Trainings. Take care. Bye.